Torozani tribe, um, welcome to our regular Thursday teaching with me, Kokotino and Lanzi, and we cover different types of topics, and today the topic that we've got is a continuation of last week's topic, because last week I was basically discussing, you know, Ugutuasa and, uh, you know, the tempering of gifts and the stealing of gifts, etc., etc. So today we are doing Q&A, so we're taking questions and answers, uh, because we didn't get to a lot of questions, is all lot, so you use your comments box to ask the questions and of course if you are on youtube you are able to use super chats which really just puts your your comments to the top so just a recap from last week i think from what i covered in length if you missed last week's teaching please catch it up it's uploaded on facebook and on youtube if you've missed it catch it up because i explained why it's you know most unlikely so that somebody can steal the gift because you are born with it so somebody can really steal with it, you know, um, they can steal it, but people can temper with you to disconnect from it. And I even spoke about some of the reasons um, and how come we find ourselves with people tempering with our gifts. Remember to subscribe, like it, uh, yeah, share, spread the word, you know. So my energies are not as boo-boo-boo. I had in go to, so last week actually I've been having to since March. So as we speak, it's like I could feel that. And last week I was feeling quite well. So I I overextended myself as usual. <laughs> I overextended myself and I did more than I probably should have and I can feel I can feel it now. Welcome, Khumulemo. Yeah, let's hear where people are from. You know, just send me a greeting at Rosa Coco. I'm from this. The hair, right? The hair, the hair, the hair, the hair. Yes. If you looked at my recent picture, I had it half. Uh, so there were, there was cornrows in the front and I did the back. And as you could see now, I did my whole full hair. Uh, so yeah, I, I like this kind of natural looking Kelly hair. Uh, thank you so much, Samke, for noticing the hair. Uh, we've got Tiny, we've got Stella, uh, Dorothy. Okay. We are not talking about your gift. We are talking about those who are looking to understand what happens when one is initiated and there is a tempering or a disturbance or thing <laughs> that you need to interesting that you know i'm i'm sneezing because sometimes i sneeze when there's a change in temperature because downstairs is much warmer than upstairs so i'm upstairs in what we are gathering and forming as a study so yeah so it's a bit chilly here uh, so let's go to lindy where who's got because i want to cover as many questions as we can lindy is asking togoza kokomina uh, Gipupa Amapai was Angoma, Amachazi, Elengue, Eli Blue, and recently dreamt a Ginga Kun Ukamba, Coco Co consult and find out what's really happening. Buteles Gau. You, if you don't know, look at my streams on. And signs that tell, I mean, you know, when you're dreaming of Uzindo, Islang and Nezangoma, so you're probably connected to Isangoma. So I don't know what you're hoping for in terms of you telling me your dreams, because like I said, I am taking questions regarding Uktuasa, um, and most especially the tempering of the gifts. Uh, so those in the house from the US, greetings from the other side of the motherland. Thank you. So, yeah, so I'm going to remove this because I'm not answering questions on dreams. I think, you know, I think people know, right? Like once you start dreaming certain things, you get, and besides the dreams, you start to get a sense and a feeling that this is probably a journey I need to go um, towards. And if you're not sure, that's why you consult and that's why you work with another healer who can be able to guide you if really this is it or this is not it. So I think for me, uh, I always, it concerns me when people come here 
knowing what they need to do and hoping I tell them I don't know something different or I confirm or validate. And then what? You know, if I say, go, go, it looks like you are possibly gifted. Then what? Because at the end of the day, you still need to act. At the end of the day, you still need to make a decision of what you're going to do about it. Because me just giving you insights and inputs does not shift your life. It doesn't change your life. It doesn't move you towards anything. I'm not taking dreams, guys. I am talking about Ugutwasa, a conversation we had last week where I spoke about can your gift be stolen? Can your gift, uh, you know, um, be tempered with? Uh, so this is a opportunity for us to really ask questions. How do I toss her from the US? I plan to come to SA in 2023, but I'm only staying one month. Well, I mean, it depends on what your gift is, right, Tasha? I wouldn't know how you do it um, unless you already know and you found out what your gift is. Then you start having a conversation with the initiator or your gobela, and together you come up with a plan. Um, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how you do it because I don't know what you're initiating and I don't know how your gobela works. So I can't speak and give input on something that I have no context of. Um, so it depends. I think some people, depending on the type, some gobelas make arrangements to do it, or they actually do require you to, you know, come and stay in South Africa for some time. But you need to first be led to the gobela and know what type of initiation you're going to do. Plan while you are there, along with your gobela, not plan and then come and land and sing Zotwasa. Uh, because it doesn't work like that. So those are the conversations you have to have with somebody who's meant to initiate you. Togoza Koko, is it possible to go twice away as you are not be shown anything as they're, tell they're telling you have a calling? Don't, don't even, don't even start. Because if you are not are connected to the spirit world, because when we are dreaming, we are actually recalling experiences from the spirit world, past, present, future experiences. So if that connection is not even established and you are not seeing or sensing anything, why why are you even, you know, like, like don't, do not, because why would you want to move from level five to level 10 if the other levels have not revealed themselves yet? Because what are you tossering? What kind of gift do you have? How do you know you really have a gift? You know what I'm saying? Because this is some of the things. And sometimes what people are doing, and I'm seeing it as a trend, when people are going through, you know, midlife crisis, when they're going through life challenges, going through traumatic experiences, and then we just like, they use Ugutwasa as a spiritual bypass. So what is spiritual bypass? Spiritual bypassing is using spiritual processes to escape reality. You see it with a lot of young people who are now going into initiation because probably they come from very uncomfortable and pleasant backgrounds. And it's not only materially or, or you know, financial um, constraints or poverty, but also maybe home is not a pleasant place to be in. So to escape not being at home, I will check in myself at Pichon getting Nettles. We're seeing those things. It is great that a lot of us are coming out and are speaking freely and openly about Ubungoma, but there are opportunists out there who are seeing this as a moment to actually you know, be entrepreneurial about it, I guess, you know, but be fraudulent about it. So you can't just pack your bags and go if you yourself have not really uh, connected, you know, to the gift itself and the path that lies ahead because you are actually going to go there and say, I'm not seeing anything, I'm not feeling anything. So what's the point? Because the, the, you need to be at some level. So at at the initiation school or epithelium, your gift becomes quite activated and amplified for usage. I said that last week. So when you your gift is not yet active, it's quite dormant. It's a sign that there's no time for you to go. If you're not seeing anything, you're not sensing anything, you're not picking up anything, then you know it's not time. It's not time yet. Fix that thing that is a problem in your life because probably that is also creating the blockage or making the gift be dormant instead of being active. So work at those things first. Don't try and skip steps and stages. I spoke about there is what we call cosmic order, two things. So if you are skipping the order of things, the organic order, you start to do inorganic things and you get inorganic 
experiences and then who do you want to blame or Kobela because the assumption is Kobelas know everything because yes they have experience well not all of them <laughs> you know but if you are truly an, a Kobela who has also been initiated and given codes of initiation then you know that one of the things you know is that you don't know everything you know the buck doesn't stop with you you are there to guide and facilitate and uh, when somebody is going against the the, the system in place you know when somebody is going against and uh, the organic order of things you are able to say no next week it doesn't work it doesn't happen you know it doesn't matter who says what you can come in today next week so two weeks later we are kaya then these are the things that you come back with I don't know anything I can't feel anything I don't even know what my closing name is I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my gift I get a lot of people like that but who signed up for that experience? You did. Yes, maybe you manipulated. You know, maybe there was deceit. Maybe there was projection. But at the end of the day, you make the decisions as an adult in your life. So if you are going to decide about your personal journey, it needs to also resonate with the experiences that you're experiencing. So if you are dreaming of those things, does that gobella have the lousy things? Does that gobella relate to the significance of a leopard? Is that something that is connected to his bande? Because each bande has its totems, has its own sacred codes. Is that connected? Will they be able to let you and inform you why that particular color by? That's why I do not do teachings on the color of bays and beads. I don't do that. <laughs> Okay, let's go to more questions. So I was like, okay, is it possible to have your best friend as your cobella or your best friend's cobella as your cobella? Well, anything is possible, but people also kind of recruit each other here and that becomes a problem. You are not going there because your best friend is there. Your best friend is the cobella. You are going there because this is the one who is meant to initiate you. And I've explained what is what are the requirements. And I always say to people, even if you can have explicit dreams about a cobella, Rather start doing work with them. Work with them first to see what they can open up and connect you with. What manifests once you start working with that particular practitioner? Because if nothing, if things get worse and things, you know, yeah, move zero to from 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 a zero to and minus hundred, then how do they hold codes? Because that's how you can establish if that person has some level of connection uh, and you know, entrances to your ancestral world. So if they are working with you, let's say on the street, my street, my guy got to go get a zone or west winds are gonna things move west. Then they say come to us, but you failed at some basic tasks. That's a red flag. So rather start doing, and also for you is to gauge if this person. You know, the way they work, you know, the type of, you, is that something that aligns with you? You know, and I always say, say, you know, like the ones that want you to do the process very quickly and get rid of you because, you know, like you can't put up an act for a long time, you know, because they can actually just, you know, um, seduce you into coming and tell you how great this place is or how they're powerful or how they know, um, da, oh, et cetera, et cetera. But after a while, you see, like, you really don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you what you say and what you do are totally contradictory. You know, they are opposites. So you could start to tell. And I say that's why people want to get over and done with, with other people's processes. Because you're an adult, you your cognitive brain is active. You will start to see that something doesn't add up here. And that's why people want to do the process very quickly. But they skip very important steps and order of things so when things are not done in an organic order so when the seed is not planted well the ground is plowed and then it's ready it's prepared for for seedlings it seeds you plant the seeds you water it it comes up you know there's all that process so if that process is not followed through we move from what, step one to step 10 or step five that's a problem if your friend is saying that i'm supposed to be your comela or my comela must trust this are you and don't allow people to have, you know, dreams that are life changing on your behalf. And well, not really. You cannot stop people from, you know, experiencing and and accessing information from the spirit world. So let me rephrase that. Do not allow people's dreams 
of you to be a deciding factor of life changing moments. So you can't, I can't dream of you as Coco Dineo coming with Twasanami, basing and then you have to act on what I dreamt. Because what I dream could also be what my desire is. If your ancestors truly want me to help you, they need to be able to communicate with you. You know, one way or the other. There's several people that I even help, you know, who were, who are in the public eye, you know, who are celebrities. And I would dream about them before they come. But I would not get in touch. Thank you so much for this dream. Thank you for this message. I don't like the lighting today. I don't know what's going on with it. I tried cleaning the lens. It looks so blurry. My apologies. So, and I was like, yeah, but this is your child whom you are asking me to help. If you truly is whom I'm supposed to help, lead them to me. And they do. They do. It might take months, it might take years, but they do. No, 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 no. And that I dreamt of Mr. Kotuk Twasa. 2011, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I only saw them six years later. Right. And I didn't actually get to know them personally until 20. Yeah, like 2018. Yeah, 20, no. 2019, 2020, 2021, somewhere there. Uh, and I just wait. Patience is virtue in this process because you also don't want to be just acting out on your own desires and thinking that is ancestral message because not all dreams are the messages from the spirit. It's sometimes our own unfulfilled desires that are coming and reminding us that we're thinking, I would love to initiate X and X. I would love for X and X to come. So, yeah. So when people say, God, I've dreamt of you, I need details. I don't need generals. You know, I don't need like, oh, we're hanging out. I mean, yeah, oh, you whiskey, that's okay. That doesn't say much to me. I need something more concrete, something solid that I know that it's not obvious. You know, if you say, I was dream, you know, we were doing this dream, that's what I do all the time. So you consume a lot of my content. I am bound to appear in your dream landscape. You consume a lot of my content, I'm bound to appear. Towards a coco, when one was epitome and terminated due to certain personal conflicts, what might necessarily be the needed to resume initiation? I hardly dream about things that are aligned with and draw. So I don't know, some Gazi. Um, you have to speak to the person you terminated your agreement of initiation with, and they can tell you how to, you know, re enroll or something. For me, I won't even say it here, but most of the cases with termination, I don't re enroll, I don't. You know, unless if there are extreme circumstances and then I can consider it. But most of the time when people walk, they walk and that's it. That's it. And depending on also, because some people become really quite dramatic, right? Because they feel like you are being held at hostage. How are you being held at hostage if you consented and you came? So if you become all dramatic and you become unpleasant with me, my doors are shut completely for life. We can't, we don't come back. We won't come back. That's it. We're done. But if it is a honest, um, truthful termination, uh, then, you know, you still have space for, for you to come back at Cosmo and be part of certain things. But I don't know if I can re-enroll you because I don't know what you've been up to. Because you see, from my own experiences, people are not always truthful and integrable. Because at the end of the day, I have other lives that are, are dependent on me besides you. So I can't want to risk everybody's lives to just take you back. If you went uh, with, uh, so me with your Kobela and it was an agreement, you go back to them and then you ask them and they will, they will be able to help. Is it possible for Kabbalah well, to buy all things? I'm a bias speaker. Even when you've not been shown it, they say they already know what you really need. I don't know. Hey, I have no idea. 
the context here, I don't know. So I can't speak on behalf of that Gobela. And I think, uh, beloveds, I would not like to be giving input on other Gobela's initiation processes that you are just telling me your own side of the story and I don't hear from them because apparently there's what we call uniform that is connected to that particular bande and there are specific things that are connected to your ancestors. So red, everyone, red skirt is quite standard for Mguni initiation. We see it all the time. Line cloth is quite standard. But there are specific things, like with my initiates, there are specific things that that only are markings of my bande. So I can't come and say your gobela can't buy, you know, because when it comes to Indoa, so we put money in the pot and then we buy collectively because there are things that are uniform for Indoa so that are required. But then the specific things, they are also what your ancestors are requiring. So I, I, can't, I can't say it is wrong or right. I have no idea because I don't know what is it she's buying you. I have no idea. Uh, Koko, how does one really know what gift they have? Uh, please look at my teaching on signs that tell you are gifted and also different kinds of ancestors and dreams that indicate you are gifted. You should be able, that should be able to unfold um, as you engage with the spirit world, as you start to connect with Abba Pansi. The messages and the types of gifts should be able to unfold but if you are blank, then that's why you work with somebody who can say, oh, when well, you dream of this is connected to this kind of gift. When you dream of this is connected to this kind of gift. So that's why, because I can't sit here and do a lecture of like, when a mo pupa so, mo pupa so it means something else. Yeah, the questions are lost now. Uh, I got it. I got it. I got a sticker that I want to acknowledge. I was trying to see, but I think if you are using a super sticker on, 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 uh, um, on YouTube, it puts up your comments up. So if that's the case, uh, please buy the super sticker and put your question underneath it so I don't miss it. Because if you don't, then it doesn't. It just shows me because it, yes, Nyasha. Oh, yes. There you go. Let's go to Nyasha. I think, yes. Gogo, how can I train my gifts and build my intuition? Furthermore, how do I nurture my prophetic gift? I don't know, Nyasha. I can't tell you, my lovey. You need to be able, I need to know what is the gift and what spirit is guiding. So I wouldn't know. Maybe you should save all the money you are donating to me for a consultation because you've been asking me so many questions and I think it's time and maybe just ask yourself what is what is, what is is it you're scared of? Uh, because I can't tell you what, I, that is, I am giving input on a specific, um, unique gift that is gifted to you. So how would I then, take a risk and be so, uh, I think, naive and unprofessional and say, do this and do this and do this. I don't even know if it's a prophetic gift. I didn't say it is. I don't give input on things I have not diagnosed. I can give, but on certain things, I mostly don't. If somebody says, I have a script, how do I heal it? Did I say you have it? Go ask the person who told you. We own a So I don't, I don't do that. I don't work like that. It's just not who I am. Okay, so your questions are going to be missed, some of them. If you really desperately need it and you are on YouTube, you buy a super sticker, uh, you know, buy a super sticker. And then on the super sticker, it just puts like what Nyasha just did. Just puts your comment up there. You know, it's she bought in pounds. You can buy in rents. I think you can buy from like 32 or 32 rents. It puts your question up. I want to do inner child healing process or any healing must I go to a healer you can you go to a life coach but the one who works with inner child healing I do that if you go to my website it will it will tell you uh, you can directly just book for a coaching session it's online the details are there if that's something and you know your first session is to give you an experience of how I do the coaching work and you see you know and then afterwards you can sign up for a series of them so you don't, you go to, coaches are also healers, but you don't go to Isangoma who is not trained in coaching. And I know there's a lot of Sangomas, hey, people say, which I've been trained this, 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 this. Really? Do, do you have, do you have a certification and accreditation for it? Because it's a technique and it's a skill you learn to um, hold space and facilitate inner child healing. Uh 
Ok. Okay, people are asking about, you know, how do you do, how do you do, yeah. In the house, uh, you are asking me for DIY processes. Awesome. Toroza Coco, can one partner in English, I'm failing to connect lately or partner because I can't even get everything and express myself fully in your season. Yeah, but because you see, and people say like, no, I say good to spirit listens to your heart's intentions versus to the technicalities you can have the best and better that good great quality candles great everything you know but if your intentions are not well intended you will still you know if you're part of because it's an obligation umoyawaku is not there so normally when i guide because i do a lot of international consultations when i guide i ask what is your native language and then from that when I'm giving you instructions, even because with people who are internationals, I give you instructions, like detailed instructions of how to pass, like what to say. Then I would add some vocabulary and you will have to acknowledge that. Because of my circumstances, because I was born, you know, outside the, you know, uh, the continent, I don't know my mother's tongue, but I come with good intentions and I'm asking you to teach me and show me the way. It works. I just got off a follow up last night with somebody from the US and she is in uh she is yeah, originally her they're from Zimbabwe, but she I think she grew up in the US and she knows no Shona, nothing, right? And I, I did two ritual processes for her and things shifted so so hugely. We got to the point where she understands what what she needs to do, right? Um, and she did all of that in English and a little bit of Shona, but the ancestors responded, you know, and then shifted in hand. She's at a much better state than when I consulted her a few months ago. So when people come here and say, no, you can't do it, I've done it. I've done it. I've done it because also when I started, I didn't know how to express myself very well in my home languages except in English. So I, because I didn't know what those words were, you know, I didn't know what those words were. And then I had to learn a Petrini. So when we are wearing food, then it became better. Uh, are you there? People are asking, how do I attach a question to the sticker? I'm going to ask Katleho to, because she uses the stickers a lot, to send a comment with a tutorial. I'm just uh, going on to here, uh, asking my tribe. To pretty please some gay I I does I saw, I saw some gay from the tribe I don't seem to have my phone is not connected to the Wi Fi so okay here you go I'm go I'm going to just type to her to give us a tutorial uh, yeah okay yes we need you on the live say hi when you get in. Okay, she's going to come in and I'll tell you how you use the super stickers. Do you see like uh, ooh, ooh, NV has given a super sticker but has not attached a question. So if you've got a question, NV, you can put it. I've noted there. I'll keep it like that. Okay. Oh, it's, oh, Tasha says it's on the left of the comment. Okay. Okay. So Caroline is giving us, uh, I mean, Tasha saying Caroline is a comment situation. Is the money sign a uh, sign press on it? Uh, press on the money sign and then it's on the left. Okay, thank you so much. Katlaho is here. Katlaho, please. People were asking how do they attach a question when they purchase a sticker. So please kindly guide. Um uh, says, Togoza Koko, is it possible for his two and ancestors to be quiet no matter how much? You pray or pass like yes, maybe yes, and there's a lot of reasons for that. So, what one one of the things is that our diet has changed. So, when we're eating heavily processed foods, high sugar, high carb diet, it makes our bodies tired. So, when we have to recall uh, messages or feel the presence, we can't because our bodies are tired, right? That's one. Number two, when we are stressed, uh. We are also, our brains are overthinking and overworking, so we can't. Or when something has happened to us in our physical body field or in our 
you know, light body fields, then there becomes what we call a tempering of some sort that has happened, whether like eating it, for example, is keto, you just lost a loved one. Those things are temperings. So when there's that as well, you tend to disconnect to, you know, the messages or uh, that they've revealed so much and you have not done any action. It's like when you are WhatsApping somebody and they blue tick you and blue tick, you eventually get a message that they're giving you the silent treatment and you stop engaging. Ha, tribe, remember to like, please. Like the life, like the life. It helps with the al uh, algorithms on YouTube. It helps because some people just bump into me because you've liked the video. So they are going, strolling about things and then they like the video. Okay. Yasha has given me more money. Goku, I saw the George Floyd uh, incident three days before it happened. This day, Goku changed my life. I know I have a calling. I'll book a session with you. Brilliant, Yasha. Looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Uh, please, uh, as soon as you book, send me a DM on Instagram. My, there's only there's one fake account, which is private. Goku, you know, Lanzi, but mine has 130... Where am I sitting at tribe with my numbers on Instagram? Don't Instagram me. Don't DM me on YouTube, please. Uh, on, on Facebook. I don't respond to the messages on Facebook. I'm sitting at 131 followers. So, and currently I've got a pay. Yeah, it's you'll see it's me. Because there's a lot on that page and it's not private, it's public. Just send it to me and then I'll make sure that we, because I need to find out our time difference so I can actually... Make sure that you do get to see me as soon as possible. Okay, so we just got a tutorial now. Super chat is, is for the question. Super sticker is for normal donation washings. Thank you. Super chat is for the question. And super sticker is for a normal donation. So use super chats for the question, not super sticker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. These super chats are not fair sometimes. <laughs> Katla has used mo mo all of them, so I don't know what they've done to you. Apologies. Yes, do you see like Yasha's, it highlights it in green and it just pops it up. Uh, uh, they're not fair, I get it, but I get so many questions, so I can't go through all the questions, right? I can't go through all the questions, unfortunately, within the hour that I come in on the live. So, yes, it just gives you, like, an advantage, but you are on YouTube. It's unfair for the Facebookers because they're not active yet on, on Facebook, but you are on YouTube. So when you are on YouTube, you just do that, you know. It's it's unfair for on a lot of reasons, but if you really want something, you, you yeah, you put your investment into it. With the super sticker, the question box comes up when you select the dollar sign on your right corner. You have to select Super Chat, not the sticker one. It will allow you to attach the question. Yes, because when my channel qualified, oh, God, I keep on forgetting the award. I need to <laughs> bring it next time. When you, when when I qualified, they, they said, you know, I need to get, offer something to uh, the tribe for making such donations. And I knew that a lot of times I come here, I do not get to everybody. Um, and because I don't get to everybody, then, you know, it, especially when it streams times, like there's so many things that come through. Then it's super, you know, it's super sticker then. Helps, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So remember the questions are, are about that. Yeah. Lazy, how am I supposed to know what you hear voices for at night? I have no idea. I have no idea, guys. Certain questions you are asking of me is you really are asking me to uh you know dig beyond my current capacity right now you know so for me i'm here to teach i'm here to educate and enlighten i'm not here to do one-on-one -on -one consultations sometimes i do but not always as when i do dreams of course when i understand what is happening in your landscape i will also start to access information from your spiritual world but with this kind of conversations it's not a one-on-one -on -one, a consultation because when you're asking me to say coco i've got headaches what is the problem 
many things can be causing your headaches. You could be stressed. You could be dehydrated. You could be spiritually called. Or oh, like me, you could have just recently got your hair done and they pulled it tight. See? Could be many things. It's the same thing when you're asking a doctor and you're telling them a symptom and you want to know the root cause from a symptom. No. When we are diagnosing, we look at a collective of symptoms and then we say, this is what's happening with you from a collective, not from a headache. A headache and a backache on its own. It's not going to give us yeah. Karabo, is it possible to experience dreams and signs of spiritually gifted person uh, and not have a spiritual gift? Most unlikely. Most unlikely. Unless if you are so consumed in watching content. But the fact that you are so consumed in watching content of spiritually gifted people, then it means your spirit is leading you where the spirit needs you to pay attention to. So it's most unlikely, uh, Karabo, that you will be dreaming of such if you don't have any sort of spiritual gifts. Caroline, see, you see, Caroline used the super sticker. Charles Akoko, can siblings have a calling around the same time? All four of us, what is this about? Also, how do you consult with the international people? Okay, so Caroline, how you consult with the international people? If you go on my website, kokodinontanzi.com, it gives you the different rates. And it would also show you the international rates. So what I've also started to do with internationals, now that I've set up this space as well, is that I can do, because you can find out that I'm 9 o'clock, it's like 10 o'clock your time, because depending on where you are at. So we do Zoom, Zoom video. It's going to be like this. Then I do the readings. Normally, I needed to have them happen while I'm at the institute. But because I've got a, a little small, I mean, not small, it's a big space, and um yeah so we, we we can do it so once you pay and then you get onto the waiting list which is about two months sometimes a month depending on how quickly i go through my list and then uh it's a month to two months uh, i think now i'm back on order because i was now at three months so when i see that i'm going beyond the two months i do more consultations in a week to try and make sure that there's not a longer waiting period. So you book that, and then when you book that, uh, then we, yeah, we, we, you know, you get your date. When you get your date, you'll also get the Zoom link, and then you will, you will get me. If it's around, it's around the time where I'm at the institute, you will have an assistant of mine basically brief you how I work, and this is what's gonna happen. And the nice thing with Zoom now is that we can record your, we, I can give you a recording of your consultation to play and go back and listen. So that's the beauty of it. So that's how you do it. And you use PayPal. So you'll have to pay, uh, use PayPal. Uh, that way it's easy to transact with PayPal versus having to do an international transfer because it takes a bit of a while and it's a bit of a tedious process. I hope I answered your question one. Well, question one. The other question is, um, is it possible for you to all be spiritually gifted? Most definitely it is. Uh, do you all have to act on it simultaneously? Most unlikely. Uh, but we having spiritual gifts doesn't mean we have the same. My dad is a Sangoma. My mother is a prophetess. My husband is a Sangoma as well. My, all my aunts are Sangoma. But we all don't do the same things. So it is possible, right? Because we are all born here spiritually gifted. It's just that what kind? What You know, some people... I think I said it on Twitter the other day that we are not all here to Tosa as a Zangoma and not all of us who are tossering as a Zangoma are supposed to be practicing Sangomas and not every one of us who's a practicing Sangoma is meant to be a Kubela, right? So that's why it is a journey. That's why it is a journey. Okay, uh, show. Let's go to... Oh. oh, yeah, I picked that one up. Okay. Oh, this is the one I was looking for. The one that popped up as a green. Shemoyo. Okay. Mayo. Hi, from Mississippi in the US. What advice, if you any, do you have for Americans that don't understand the language um, or know much of African culture? Okay. So, one, follow this YouTube channel because uh, one thing that, uh, that I do uniquely is, and follow Joy Mohami as well, because I know and I can vouch for her. So, and she's, um, she does, she's a healer, but she does different kinds of healing than I work. I am, a, I work as a Sangoma and of course, life coach and other things. And Joy is trained in other things as well. 
But what I do is that, you know, learn as much as you can. Um, this channel, I know that the teachings that I teach is one because some people that I've seen on YouTube, and I'm not going to say, I find that they they also, uh, yeah, you know, there's a bit of like, uh, this is this is the way and no any other way. If you don't do it this way. So I find that it becomes quite religious and it moves from the principles of spirituality because spirituality is more about me helping you find your own journey that resonates with your spirit that speaks true to you. So do, you know, learn as much as you can. Uh, Maldome Somme's work also in the diaspora is really powerful uh, because he writes a lot about West, West African uh, you know what West African spirituality, the similarities there. So start there, start reading, start listening. Um, but if you're needing to then uh, connect with your ancestors and wanting to do something, then the first step you take is booking a consultation because then we can understand what's happening in that world. Because I don't like to say there's a lot of videos that say it's like Pata one on one took me years to do and people please go go tell us how to Pata. But I make a few disclaimers there because not everyone who is going to watch that video and start doing things is going to help them because there are certain things that might be existing. There might be debris. There might be, you know, um, debt that is is in your, you know, filled that when you are trying to connect, it might just not happen. When you are trying to just follow what I I speak, it might not happen. Yes, Babu Credo Mito's books as well, uh, but very quite philosophical, Babu Credo Muto. The other writers I know, uh, they write in, in, in Guni, so it might be really difficult. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to be studying some things now, and I'm working on some things now that will make more information accessible. Um, I've been contemplating, and it's just a matter of because my, my Kobela work takes a lot of my time, guys, and 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 it's a lot of work, you know, and that's why I'm hoping that I'm, I've set a goal with my ancestors because I, once that goal is met, I can actually just, like, step down as initiating people who are staying there and start to run masterclasses so that people who are in the diaspora can sign up for a course on African spirituality and they can learn. That's what, that's my, that's what, where I want to be at. Okay, Envy says, Toza Coco three months ago, I had a dream where voices said, Lapo Amanzi, Esangana Corner, no Luan, the Gumele Ungene, Ushale Noma, is in two, is in that to the voice feather says, A Nalum Sevens way, town planning, O O O Funayo. So, okay, so, well, the thing is that I always say to people, ancestral messages, when we are getting guidance, you can't just go there's plenty of those things who is guiding you before you go because not every ancestor has crossed over and it's an ancestor of light there are siphoning ancestors what if and they want you to go there and then you don't come back what if there's shenanigans happening there? So when this is an ancestor that truly has your best interest at heart and this guidance is because it's going to, you know. So for me, when there's a lot of threats and intimidations, and this is I've, I've learned over the past year, I've not always known this information, but when I I, I was learning with the joy, I started understanding that actually uh, with my coaches that when the ancestors become quite demanding and aggressive in their demands, they really are not true light ancestors. They're the ones who are stuck, trapped between, you know, their soul is, be is between the living and the dead world. So they are so insistent because they have no life force to keep them going wherever they're at. So they're going to impose because ancestors are not supposed to impose, impede or be forceful. They are our guides. They cannot temper with our spirit, which is God in us. God in us cannot be dictated by a creation of God. Makes sense? Because ancestors had a human experience. So they were once created. So when they have completely transcended and ascended, they know that truth. So they can't come back and dictate and demand on what grounds. Because what then is happening is that they are now tempering with your divine 
will. Your sovereignty reigns supreme above anything else. God has given us that and we work with that. They guide. So if that's where you go, go back. Thank you for the message. But who are you and where are you leading me to and what is this for? The clearer the message is and the clearer the ancestors are, then they come with good intentions. But when it becomes more ambiguous and they get more aggressive with you, I called. No, 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 no. No, 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 senor. Okay, Chlorine is asking, Tawaza Coco, what happens if you all your symptoms of a calling have been confirmed via consultation, but you do not get the dreams to give direction? And how do we know which ancestor drives the calling? Okay, so a consultation does not give you direct. And consultation is a confirmation. And most likely it's supposed to give you a directive in terms of a treatments you need to start doing to allow for your ancestral journey to unfold so if you've done a consultation francis and they have not been able to prescribe rituals uh treatments for you then that's why you are left with like okay i still don't know what to do because it's like yes i know i have the calling okay coco you're experiencing x and x and x definitely i do it means the calling. Thank you for the confirmation, but what must I do next? And normalize asking what must I do next? Because you are given a diagnosis that requires a treatment so that that which is disease can be made at ease. So if you are not really then doing the treatments, how is the disease supposed to be eased up and healed? So, you know, if you still are working with that healer, ask them what you must supposed to do because... Lots of people, are, you know, so what I'm saying is that not everyone is supposed to do the same thing. That's why when you are consulting, we call upon your ancestors to come forward and guide in terms of the next steps post your consultation. So we can't just say like, oh, you've got a calling. It's fine. Go past the river. Hey, what if your people died in the river? I can't send you to the ocean if... There was a massacre of your ancestors during the slave trade that were thrown there and there's a lot of blood. Then I'm asking you to go in there without checking if that field is okay for you to access. You know what I'm saying? So that's what a consultation is for, is to see what was, what is, what needs to be. What was, what is, what needs to be. Three things. What was, what is, what needs to be. That's why you go for a consultation. What was is what has happened before your time, you know, with your childhood, before you were even born. What is is what's currently happening? What is the situation in the current moment? What needs to be is what are the next steps? What are the possible solutions or the things that you need to do to, to resolve, you know, to come to a resolve of some sort with your situation? I hope I've answered your question. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure there's great healers in the U.S. Uh, and and so forth. I have not really worked with much. There's one that I trained. She's in Washington, but she didn't complete, but she can consult. You know, she can see and, and all of that. So, um, but this is one thing I've personally decided for myself. If I'm going to do ayahuasca, for example, because it's something that I'm curious on, I want to do, I will go where ayahuasca was founded. I will find an authentic, legit healer. And even if it takes me years to find them, because sometimes people come into the internet, listen to Coco Dino, do everything as Coco Dino says, and then they say, I'm an initiated healer. So be quite discerning when you are working with people, you know, quite discerning. I think I've got three people who are supposed to come to South Africa for initiation, but it's not easy. Trust me, to come to a foreign country and learn, and learn what is already hard for South Africans, it's a challenge. But I feel like where there's a will, there's a way. Your willingness should meet your aspiration of becoming a Sangoma. Because Sangoma work, it's, it's, yeah. Especially, you first have to be able to collapse your Western construct and understanding of spirituality. Well, I mean, if you need my help... Uh, you know, uh, .com. uh if you go, you on my YouTube, on YouTube, there's a WhatsApp icon, just press that WhatsApp, you can book 
that's how how you can get my help yes one of the places i want to go okay Oh, so Envy has responded to Oza Kokongyabonga. That makes sense because one of the things I've picked up is that they take a while to speak. Sometimes they can come back after. Yes, then be patient. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad that... You, thank you for that response. Um, yeah. That's that response because it's good to know that it resonates with you. Guys, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, Coco, how do you prepare for the great reset? Resetting for what, beloved? I told you, Yasha, you just have to save that money to come see me. Um, I lived in Switzerland for four years as a child. I was born hardcore Christian. I was told I was demon possessed by my African family. Oh, man. That's not pleasant. That's not pleasant. Toza Coco, can a person self-initiate? We see a lot of people who stay. Say, oh God, say their ancestors don't want them to go to initiation school or they just want for certain rituals only. No, if you're self-initiating, then it means they will show you everything, right? So some people are not wanting to do the work. They are manipulating the process for their own benefit and so that they can still want to be quite. So if you are self-initiating, it means you need to understand and decode everything. And from what I know in ancient times, self-initiated people will still be taken away from their community, from their family, into a rich space for months or years until such a time that initiation is completed. Then a family member will get a message, uh, you know, through dreams, or they'll go somewhere and say, no, this person is, has been here and this person has done this. Um, please... Uh, these are the things that are required. So do not let people, there's a lot of things like self-initiate. So if, and I see a lot of like, I'm self-initiated, but now you want to go initiate? Right? So what are you going to teach? You can't teach what you don't know. You can't gift what you have not experienced. So it means your guidance would be guiding people who need to self-initiate. But the minute you say I've self-initiated, but I'm going to initiate other people, on what grounds? How can a teacher say I'm going to be a teacher if they've not actually been taught themselves, if they've not went to school? So where did you understand your basics of the subject matter that you're trying to teach on? See what I'm saying? So there's a lot of that. And it also, they become quite... um unethical in their practices because going to a Pechreni is to teach you the discipline and understand the code of practice. Like these are the code of ethics I need to abide by as a healer. And this is how I carry myself. So they don't have that. They don't have the discipline. These are the people who do shenanigans, you know, and crazy, ridiculous, outrageous things on social media because they self-initiated. So who was actually saying, this is not how you behave as a healer. This is not how you carry yourself. This is not the language you use. You cannot want to be a master if you have not been a student. Because mastery is built through learning. So self-learning. Now you are master of what? By whom? Who certifies you? You know, who, who says indeed you know what you're talking about? Because people come because they know. Most of the people, some people come and they know how to consult. They know everything. But there are still certain things they need to learn. There are certain behaviors that they need to learn. Then we are going to say as a Sangoma, you can't be like that. When you are a gossip, when you spread news, Ben, when everybody needs to know who's broken up with who, they come to you. So if you've been self-initiating, then it means that, that kind of behavior would have not actually died with your initiation because part of your initiation is to actually have your shadows be revealed to you so you can deal with them because your shadows get in the way of your gift. Yeah. So don't be fooled. There's a lot on Facebook, Bella, of, you know, because my gift is so powerful. And and I and 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 if it is that powerful, why do you wh where do you have the time to be sitting on on Facebook responding to every comment from a contributor on a group? 
Fellow, your people are powerful and they've got all this big mission. You should be invested in the mission, not invested in fixing everyone's problems that you have no idea. Um, just from a, a sentence and you think that you've got the keys to all their life's problems. It's similar to people who get DMs. Be careful of those DMs where people say people are jealous of you, you are so gifted, or you've got, you know, you've got so much luck, but people, so I'm here, I'll send by your ancestors. Really now? Like really my ancestors just like went and like spoke to you. Hi guys, let's not be gullible. You know, we are so gullible. Who doesn't have a hard time? We all go through challenges. I go through challenges as we go for dinner. I get spiritual attacks because it's part of my experience here on earth. I am not immune to human calamities. I am not Im immune to human challenges, right? I'm not immune. I am here to experience being human as a spirit being. So why do I then not want to experience human things, misfortunes? And part of the cosmic laws is that things happen in rhythm and cycles there are cycles as winter summer spring why do i want to be popping and springing all the time if things go into a hibernation it's because it's time for rest and reset that i'll say self-initiate is talk of actually fear of going to better no but it's also a bit like you know there's a bit of uh, toxicity around it. It's not just fear of going a person. There's toxicity of it. There is arrogance to it. There's egotism with it, you know. It's like quite egotistical for you to say, no, I'm self-initiating, right? If you're self-initiating, you don't even, even have to ask me what your dreams mean because they will just be so clear. By now, you would be able to know like, no, this is the past, this is the present. And these are the ones who have thousands and millions of questions because it's not just fear, it's 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 arrogance and e ego you know it's it's ones who just believe they are just above yeah yeah thank you lee um lee says i had someone dm me for a reading because they were sent by my sister block them period that's what you do block i've had people dm me <laughs> as a sangom i mean like really easy like oh people are jealous of you ah who is not? It's part of life. Not everybody's going to be on your corner. You don't, you don't on everybody's corner. You don't cheer everyone. You've got your first, favorite artist, your favorite music, your this and this, you know? So it's like that. Not everybody likes apples. Uh, not everybody likes bananas. Okay, there was asked to just to clarify, just in a series of connected dreams that to know, knowing that time to toss has come, or just one holistic dream. It is a series of things, uh, It's a, uh, for me, it's like a series of things that comes together to give us a complete picture of a puzzle. Like there's people here who have, uh, you know, uh, Danny Kobongo with me two years ago, and they still have not completed the piece of the puzzle. And when it's time to toss, and nobody's going to tell you, you will know it. No, the, the, your spirit will know that. But you would have actually completed the puzzle, and all that will happen is that that puzzle will be illuminated. You'll be like, it will be a beaming light. Oh, thank you, Loiso. Oh, that's really great. Thank you so much. Now that you come in, like all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm craving what? The, what is that cake that you made me taste? That is it the mousse? Yeah, like all of a sudden, I'm craving that. Okay, tribe. So next week, I wanna bring a pasta in to join me and be part of this conversation. Let me know what you think. To speak about Christianity and African spirituality because I still get a lot of questions around that. You know, where people feel conflicted. Like by honoring African spirituality, I will be betraying. My, my, you know, my God and et cetera, et cetera. So prepare your questions. Uh, yeah. So do let me know. Um, do let me know if it's something that you are interested in watching uh, uh, or coming through. Toza Coco, sending love and light. What advice would you give someone raising a child with a calling? Well, I'm going to do a teaching on this one day. But firstly is that make them feel like 
their gift is not a curse. Do not demonize them for it. That's one. Number two, make them understand that they're still a child and they need to be able to enjoy their, their childhood. And a gift is a beautiful thing, but beautiful things carry huge responsibilities. And they're not at the age where they can take that huge responsibility. Then find ways in which they can actually work with their gift without having to have so much that they're responsible for, without them having to go trasa. You know, if they're starting to become troublesome, do all the necessary rituals early as an intervention. So I'll tell you what I do with my kids is that my kids, all four of them are spiritually gifted. They play drums by a guitar. You know, when they tell us messages, we hear Sabakaira, how to pass, how to speak. We keep on re reminding them, your gift is really beautiful. Your gift is amazing, but it comes with a huge responsibility. And right now, you're a child and you need to be like that. Right? Yeah. And Mina Dice, I've already spoken. If you go through and binge watch some of my videos on, 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 on dreams, I speak about diets that affect dreams. I've spoken and I've covered this, but I'm, I, I'm, I will revisit the topic. Konisine Masoga, would I advise for you to constantly, uh, I would advise to follow your spirit. If your spirit, uh, because you see, if you've been seeing that healer, it means you've watched them, you've seen them somewhere, somehow. So something is drawn to you. So your dream can be your desire or it could be your true spirit leading you there if it feels comfortable. So I can't say go, you know, then you come back and you are like, yo, go, go. It wasn't, trust yourself. Go with what feels right for you. If it feels right for you. I mean, the fact that you are dreaming of them, it means, you know, three is a charm, but it also means that you are engaging in something around them. Either they live close to you or, you know, you watch their content or you see them all the time. But do they speak to you? Do they speak? How much do you know about it? You know, have you had other people recommend them? You know, so I, I can't say to you, go. It's not it's not as easy like that because I, I don't want to tell people what to do. I rather give guidance because at the end of the day, you are all responsible for your lives and you make decisions that will move you to a better place or really be, you know, be helpful for you. Because if I'm saying do not and don't do this, you know, yeah. Yeah, hopefully one day I'll bring an iman and we can speak about this, you know. But next, uh, next, next week I'm gonna try bring Umfundi Sakhatebe to teach us about the relationship between African spirituality and Christianity. Awesome! Thank you so much. Get your questions ready. Get them prepared. Yeah, I'll try sort out this lighting. You know, it, it looks a little bit blurry. I think it's been blurry over a period of time. I need to figure it out. But thank you so much. That's it for tonight. We shall see you next week. And remember to be on Twitter. Please, guys, be on Twitter. Be on Twitter. Be on Twitter. Uh, on Tuesdays where we do the Twitter space. What is Mvumagufa? And Mvumagufa part of initiation? Caroline, my dear, unfortunately, it is something I will not teach about. Not now, not anytime soon, because that is a sacred ritual of initiation. If I speak it, the self-initiated will start to think that they are now initiated. It's sacred, and I won't discuss it. But thank you for asking that question. Good night.